in this video lecture first we will try to recollect what we have learned in the previous lectures so based on the source of electron donor microorganism can be divided there into lithotrophs as well as organotrophs and finally there comes the major classification of the organisms based on the energy as well as the electron donor that is the nutrition classification that is four groups of organisms so microorganism classified to lithotrophs and organotrophs this is based on the carbon requirement and from there it is classified into photolithotrophs hemolithotrophs for photolithotrophs classical example is purple sulfur bacteria for hemolithotrophs it's of a example is nitrosomonas and then there is a two groups of lithotrophs hemolithotrophs are also present there one is a aerobic hemolithotrophic organism that are all the nitrosomonas and sulfur oxidizing bacteria as if you recollect in the previous lecture i have told that there is a anaerobic hemolithotrophic organism that is certain methanogen seems to exist so an example for an anaerobic hemolithotrophic organism is a methanogens of group methanothermus and methanocaldus and methanopyrus even certain anamox bacteria are example for anaerobic hemolithotrophic organism and then comes the photo organotrophs the example is a rhodospirillum that is purple non sulfur bacteria and finally the hemo organotrophs that is the most bacteria and fungi are all falling under this category so these are the four important nutritional groups which we have studied in the previous lecture and finally there is a one group which is referred as a mixotropic it refers to organism that use inorganic chemicals as a energy that is hemolithotrophy nutrition and they can able to obtain their carbon from the organic compound that is heterotrophic in their carbon consumption so here the inorganic chemical compounds that serve as a energy for this mixotrophs refers to hydrogen sulfide nitrate and hydrogen whereas the organic carbon could be obtained from acetate so in short mixotrophs refers to those that obtain energy from inorganic compound and carbon from organic compounds example for a mixotroph is bigotova and thiotrix the next classification is based on the requirement of growth factors here is the growth factor mainly refers to the vitamin requirement for the microorganism based on that microorganism can be divided into non fastidious example is a bacillus and fastidious if you look at into the meaning for fastidious you can able to understand what is a non fastidious so fastidious meaning that requires growth factors and complex nutrient that are all need to be artificially supplied in the medium for the growth of the organisms example for a organism of fastidious nutrient requirement is streptococcus agalactae and another example is hemophilus influenza this is the one which is causing infection there in the respiratory tract it causes the meningitis problem and it requires a lot of growth factors including hemin that is factor x nad that is factor v thiamine pantothenic acid these are all the vitamins and even certain nucleotides such as a uracil and cysteine that are required for the growth of this organism in the petri plate the next one is the mode of ingestion or uptake of nutrient a classification based on the uptake of nutrient here so microorganism on this basis can be classified into osmotropic as well as endocytic or holozoic group of organisms what is mean by osmotropic group of organism it refers to those organism that are involved in the extracellular digestion of the polymeric carbon substrate outside to the cell here the examples are bacteria and fungi they usually perform the digestion of the polymeric substance outside and further that has been taken inside by the process of osmosis that is the reason in simpler terms they are referred as a osmotropic in nutrition and the next one is the endocytic or holozoic group of nutrition it refers to a process in which the particulate matter is completely ingested a very simple example here is amoeba that is involved in ingestion of the particulate matter through the formation of the contractile vacuoles this kind of a holozoic or endocytic mode can be possible by certain cell types of an organism say for example this is a common process in most eukaryote and the phagocytic cells that have been residing there in the blood tissues are involved in a endocytic way of nutrition the next classification is related to growth of the organisms 
in the natural environment. Microbes on this basis can be divided into copiotrophs and oligotrophs. Copious meaning numerous. They are also referred as the R strategist. R refers to rapidly multiplying group of organism. They are also referred as a zymogenous bacteria. So these are the bacteria. Their population get in a huge numbers when substrate is available in surplus amounts. The other groups are referred as a oligotrophs that are also called as a K strategist or constant population of organism remaining in an environment. They are also referred as the autothonous bacteria, that is their population will not be increasing or decreasing based upon the substrate available there in the environment. Example of the organism here includes Pelagibacter and Acidobacteria. Acidobacteria is a dominant phyla that have been existing there in the soil system. Next comes the classification of organism based on the nutrient synthesizing potential. So, based on nutrient biosynthesis potential of the organism, they are divided into prototrophs as well as oxotrophs. What is the meaning here for the prototrophs as well as oxotrophs? Prototrophs are the strains of bacteria that can grow in a minimal media, that is a media which contains only a carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and certain vitamins and ions. With that, they can able to make all other nutrient or the growth factors that are required for their growth by themselves. That is, they will have the gene source that is required for synthesis of all the growth factor by themselves. However, the oxotropic bacteria refers to the one in which certain genes will be lacking. That is, certain gene that encode for some particular enzymes will be lacking. So, those particular enzyme based biosynthetic products are all need to be artificially supplied in the media for the growth of the organism. That is, in a minimal media, you need to have a specific nutrient addition for the growth of this organism. Next comes the classification of the organism based on certain environmental factors. Say the first one is based on solute as well as water activity. Here the solute refers to substance that have been dissolved there in a solvent how it influences a microbial activity and water activity refers to the relative availability of water in a substance that can able to support the growth of the organism. Based on these factors, they are divided into osmotolerant organism and halophilic organism. In the last column, I have given the examples. Say example for a halophil is a halobacterium salinarum which requires a sodium chloride at a quantity of above 0.2 molar concentrations for their growth and osmo tolerant refers to those organisms that grows over a wide range of water activity or osmotic concentration. Again the classical example is Cephalococcus aurus as well as Cinchio saccharomyces pompei. Then classification based on the pH. These are all the things you have already read that the fundamentals of microbiology also so I am not going to go in detail on this classification. Acidophil, neutrophil, alkalophil, Example, you can just pick one example for every group and the range you can look by yourself. And the next one is the temperature. Based on the temperature, it is divided into psychrophil, psychrotrop, mesophil and thermophil. The important point here is you have to know the temperature ranges and one example under each category. The next one is the oxygen concentration. This is having some role there with our physiology. So, obligate aero, facultative anaero, aero tolerant anaero obligate anaerobe and micro aerophilic group of organism. This is the classification based on the oxygen requirements of the organism. Obligate aerobe is the one which completely required oxygen for its growth. That is 21 percentage of oxygen is required for its growth. Facultative anaerobe does not require oxygen for growth but grows better in the presence of an oxygen concentration. Example for facultative anaerobe is the Escherichia coli. Then aero tolerant. Most of the lactobacillus group of organisms are referred as a aerotolerant. They grow equally well in the presence or absence of oxygen concentration. Obligate anaerobe is the one which do not able to tolerate the oxygen. So, immediately it dies. So, there comes the group of fermentative organisms, mainly Clostridium, Methanobacterium. They are all coming under this category. Microaerophilic are those that requires oxygen concentration lesser than that of the aerobic group of organisms. That is, 2 to 10 percentage of the oxygen itself sufficient for their growth. Very classical example here is the azospirella. 
that grows in the root surface of the plant system and they can able to fix nitrogen. And the last classification is based on the pressure, that is amount of pressure in which they can able to survive. They are called as a barophilic organism or piezophilic organism that requires a very high or rapid hydrostatic pressure for their growth. Example is here Moritella yaionosi. So that is a typical organism that grows in a high hydrostatic pressure condition. 